from my own personal point of view, I see very much the success of customer success being in training. That if you get the onboarding right and you train somebody right in using the system, then the vast majority of your problems later on down the line will either be mitigated or completely solved. So I work for Practitest. We are a test management software company. We have a complete life cycle ALM system whereby you start off with your requirements for your testing, you then write your test cases, you run your test cases and write up bugs. I've been head of customer success now for three years at Practitest. I came into the company, we weren't really using any um, customer success software or customer success processes when I started. I'm very lucky in being a member of a company that's very proactive in customer success and sees the value of looking after our customers beyond just support. Of course, being SaaS software, we're pushing new features all the time and people often don't notice them. So we want to remind them that there are new features, show them what the new features are. And that's the sort of processes that we need to capture. And then of course, when there's risk, getting in contact with customers who we think are risk, at risk of churn, they've gone to sleep, they're not using the system, or they've had huge drops in their numbers of users. All these uh, things uh, are risk indicators, and we want to be able to know that we need to uh, talk to these customers, contact them, and try and either wake them up or assess, at least know what the risk is. Uh, management doesn't worry about churn, it worries about unexplained churn. We actually did use for a short time a different piece of software and coming into buying software you often don't know exactly what you're looking for but um, during the course of using this other piece of software we realised what we weren't looking for and uh, customer success boxes had been part of our procurement process the first time round and uh, the other piece of software had just won out by literally a nose. And so it was then a relatively simple method to come back to you, Puneet, and say, we do want to use customer success box. And uh, these are the things which we've seen in the other software, which we didn't like. And for me, what I often saw was that there was a disjoint, that customer success software brings in huge amounts of information from your system, but then it does, you don't know really what to know what to do with it and it makes recommendations, it gives you advice. But then once you start following that advice, you don't see the, com the closing of the loop and the, the circle completing itself. It gives you instructions, tells you what to do. You do those things, but you don't see whether it's been successful or not. And so the actionability is reduced by the fact that you never know whether your feedback, or if you decide to wait a few days, I'm going to ignore this warning for a few days then it still sends you the warning, even though things may have got better. Whereas customer success box the, uh, is, seems to complete that circle and to want to be able to inform you of the latest information rather than just the information at one point. So the regeneration of alerts was very important to us. And of course, generally actionability across our processes, we needed to be able to be more organized and to be able to see what's going on and to act based on it. We know which sections we're going to look in of customer success box. We've got um, different activities set up. So whether it's the onboarding playbooks, we have playbooks for onboarding. We have um, grids which show us customers who are going to sleep and inactive. Or, and then we have one of the new features which has come into customer success box, which we find very useful, is the ability to see if customers have responded to your emails. So that um, if somebody's inactive, but they are talking to you, then they're in a different category than somebody who is neither talking to you nor is um, active in the system. And so the ability to be able to see the differences, not accidentally send emails to people who you shouldn't, who you don't need to send emails to. It's very interesting seeing it from the other side as somebody who works in customer success myself and now having to be the customer and uh, see how it, the reaction between a customer success manager and another customer success manager is, has been very fruitful and enjoyable because it goes beyond just the implementation of the system it's a sharing of ideas as well and so having somebody who's another trusted advisor and an expert in their own field is very interesting to be able to um, work together and to improve our processes based on that and share feedback as well
the documentation which um, I was able to share with our developers was also very useful and gave, I'd say 90% of the questions were answered directly in the documentation. With regard to the onboarding process is that we were able to put it into a playbook and this playbook we put our milestones into it, what we want people to be able to do and we can immediately see just by looking at a single screen our onboarding customers, how they're doing and whether they're having the meetings that they're meant to, whether the follow-up from the meetings has been what we intend it to be, that they're completing milestones because our meetings are training meetings in effect. And so to be able to train our customers and then see the results immediately of what our training is doing. Are our customers actually doing what they're meant to do as a result of the training or have they slipped back? And so that's something which is important to us. And the, I must say, I'm a sucker for uh, bright, colourful GUIs and Customer Success Box has really given us that. And it makes the job not just um, easier, but also more pleasurable as well. Being able to see graphically in front of us exactly how things, uh, processes are going, particularly things like the onboarding. So being able to actually do our processes, manage them, is from a customer success manager's point of view very easy in that I can look through the graphs, charts, etc. and see what I need to know. Um, your customer success managers, technical support, etc. have been wonderful in helping us to implement dashboards and reports. 2020 is a year when I wouldn't want to say customer success box has saved us or customer success box hasn't. But coincidentally, with how bad this year has been, our churn rates have actually decreased and significantly as well. So I can put that down to customer success box or not, but certainly customer success box has enabled us to be very proactive and contact, keep contacting customers and show us who are the risky, who we believe are the risky customers. And it has enabled us to really work on those customers.